Lee from A Pages in Ink and today I will be doing my Fave Friday jar. If you don't know what this is, this is when I have a bunch of topics in this jar and every Friday I draw one out and talk about it and whatever, saying whatever I can think of basically. Because I have trouble with structure so this will help me to make videos and not have to worry about it because I just say it was off the top of my head. Alright, so today's topic is adaptations. So right off the bat, I know just the adaptation that I want to talk about for just a little bit, um, and that is the new Beauty and the Beast film adaptation that is coming out this year in March, in just a couple months, and I am so excited. I am so excited. My mom's school um, is doing it for their musical, and so she's tired of it, but I'm like, we were listening to the soundtrack in the car, actually, like, not even... 10 minutes ago, um, and I was singing along, and I was just so excited. It is my favorite fairy tale, my favorite story. I have not read that many adaptations for it, but I don't think there are that many. Um, I've read Beastly, I have read A Court of Thorns and Roses, and I have read Cruel Beauty. And I think that's maybe three of five adaptations that I know of. Um, and I know there's quite a few for, like, Cinderella, and, um... There's more. There's Red Riding Hood. There's a couple that are Little Mermaid. Um, for example, Siren by Kira Cass that I have not read yet. Um, yeah, so it's I love Beauty and the Beast. It's my favorite story. And I don't really know exactly when it became my favorite because when I was really little I liked Aurora. So I liked Sleeping Beauty. Um, she was my favorite princess. And then I really liked Mulan. Actually, Mulan was my favorite Disney movie growing up, like, from a certain point up. Um, because she's just a strong, independent female character, um, who does something to save her family, but ultimately to prove to herself that she's worth something. You know, everybody's, um, when she leaves the, uh, dragon lady's house, and she says, you will never bring your family honor, she was kind of proving to herself that I don't need to be a wife to do this. Um, you know, breaking gender roles, pretty much. And I just, I really loved Mulan. And I still really love the movie and the character and just everything that it is. But at some point, I became really obsessed with Beauty and the Beast. And I have no idea when it started. I want to say in 2010, but there wasn't really much of a reason for it. I think what had happened was, um, I was just watching a bunch of Disney movies, and I watched Beauty and the Beast for the first time in a little while, and I was like, so just something clicked, I guess. I was just like, that. That is a movie that I love. That is a story that I love. Because it's not, as much as people like to say that it's Stockholm Syndrome, it's not. You know, Belle doesn't fall for Beast until he starts to respect her. She, you know, leaves and ultimately comes back to help him because he saved her. You know, it's not so much, you know, it's not unconditional. She wanted respect. And at first she wasn't getting it. He was demanding and mean. And then after that certain point, he started to respect her. And that's what she was looking for. That's why she stayed, was because she was finally being seen as an equal. She was finally being treated with respect. So I don't like the fact that people are like, oh, it's Stockholm Syndrome, because it's not. It's much bigger than that. Um, you know, it's, I guess it's the idea that, you know, nobody can love a beast, because in today's society, beauty standards are so high, um, that, you know, the fact that he's this hideous beast, nobody can love him, so it must be Stockholm Syndrome. It must be that she's identifying with her kidnap her, her prison, her, she's a prisoner, her prisonee, her warden, um, which is not the case. And what I, I, what I do like about this movie is that, like, the fact that people fear what they don't understand. Even at one point in, um, the villagers attack song, when they go after Beast, they say, um, what is the line? We don't understand it and it scares us. I believe that's what it is. And 
the beast is mysterious at least. I think is the is the lyric. Um but it's just such a good story. I love it. Um but anyway, so the fact that people don't like what they don't understand and you know the idea that you can love somebody more for what's on the outside. And I feel like in today's society, that's a really important lesson to know and understand. That, you know, not everybody is beautiful, or we are all beautiful in our own way. And sometimes it doesn't even matter whether or not we're physically attractive. You know, somebody could be absolutely gorgeous, like carved from marble, could be a statue in a museum from, museum? Museum from Greece. But it could be, like, the most horrible person in the world. But that wouldn't matter to some people because, hey, he's beautiful, he's gorgeous. Or she, she could be just as beautiful. Or they. You know, a person. Um, but, yeah, so I just, I really like Beauty and the Beast. And this kind of turned into, like, a Beauty and the Beast montage, but I will continue on. Um, another adaptation that I really enjoy is the Hunger Games movies. I have read the books, so this isn't a Harry Potter instance where I have not read the books but love the movies. I love both. I think they did a brilliant job at adapta at adapting, of adapting the book to the movies. There are quite a few things that are different um, that I actually don't mind. For example, Effie isn't in Effie Trinket is not in the third book but she's in the third movie and I actually think it made the whole thing better in my opinion um but I like the thing I I mean you know they're I just no words I really like the movies I don't think that they've done really anything all that detrimental you know it's not another Percy Jackson or Aragon you know you know um I like I'm trying to think of like more specific things other than Effie that are different. I haven't read them in a while and that's the only thing that really sticks out to me. Um, I am kind of sad that they didn't have a couple props in there that I really kind of wanted to see such as her like bow that's more alive in the books. It's not actually like living but that's how it feels because it's like a machine so it like hums which is kind of cool. Um, and the pocket watch I mean, in the movie, they have um, Plutarch pull out a pocket watch. In the movie, it, like, lights up. He, like, passes his thumb over it or something, and there's, like, the Mockingjay. I mean, we have watches that have this button that will make the background glow. How can we not have a pocket watch that glows when you, like, hit the button or whatever? Like, that would have been so cool. Um, there's a couple other things, really that are in the books that weren't in the movies, but it's been a while, and I don't have, like, a chart already written out for it. Um, one ad adaptation that I didn't like, um, and then one that I'm kind of eh on so far, um, and that is the adaptations for the Mortal Instruments series by Cassandra Clare. The movie Nobody wants to talk about the movie. It just... The... the Honestly, to me, the acting wasn't terrible. I loved the person that played Simon. Like, he made a great Simon. Probably not as good as the Simon for the TV series, but I'll get there. Um, but I did really like him. He made a great Simon. Um, and they did follow a little bit of the story structure. The thing that I hated the most, and I think it was because they were so limited being a movie and not like a TV series, um, was setting, because like the part where they're supposed to be like in a mansion somewhere else, it was like brought to the Institute, and I was like, this wouldn't happen, it's consecrated ground. Although, you know, movies you can do anything, but it was just kind of like, this is not how this goes. Ugh. Now, the TV series. I like the TV series for the most part. It, do it sticks pretty well to the books. There's not a whole lot that is different. The fact that they're aged up kind of bothers me a little bit. I don't really know why. Um, it does make it easier for people to get into the story. Um, 
But I guess... I think what... I guess it just kind of tampers with... Um... Some of the things. Which, at the same time, it really doesn't. doesn't really matter how old they are. I don't know. Um... I guess one thing that kind of psychs me out is Alec getting married to... Um... I think it was Helen. Who, in the series, I think is actually... A lesbian. So I think that might come out. Spoiler alert for anybody that watches the show, um, if that's still being kept in there. I do really like Malik. Malik is actually pretty well done. Like um, Matthew and uh, Henry. I can't remember his name, and that's so disappointing because I love him. He he's great. Um, but they, they do, they do it justice. I mean, I, I don't know. There are some things I'm not big on. I have not seen season two yet. It's supposed to be on my DVR, but I'm not sure it's been recording because we don't watch, I, my brother and I spend most of our time in our bedrooms watching like Netflix or for me, I spent most of today watching YouTube. Um, so like TV hasn't been very big with us. So the... Cable box isn't always on, so I don't know if it's been recording, but it's supposed to be. Um, so eventually I will get there. Um, but so far I'm not I'm not mad at it. I'm I'm not happy. Like well not I'm not obsessed like I was hoping to be. I'm just kind of like, meh, it's okay. Um, which is funny because the characters are actually all younger than not all younger than me. I think Ale uh Alex's character is actually older. Um, but like Clary and Jace, I believe, are both younger than me by, like, two years, so it's kind of weird. Because I keep thinking they're, like, older. I don't know. I'm, I'm still stuck in my teenagers. Um, which makes me sound old now. I'm only 21, guys. Don't worry. Let's see. Adaptations. I have not at all seen the Twilight adaptations. No, I have seen the first movie, but I watched it online and the quality was so awful um, but there were just things I just, I just, eh, no. I wasn't, I wasn't about them. I didn't watch the rest of them. It just, nope. And it's funny because even Robert Pattinson is like, this is the worst movie. Uh, I love the Harry Potter adaptations, but I have not read the book, so I cannot test, testimate? It's not a word. I, I cannot give test, proper testimony as to, um, how well they are adapted. Adapted? I was gonna say adapted again. How well they're adapted. I know there's a lot that's different between the books and the movies. I still really enjoy them. And I know a lot of people that have read the books and watched the movies still enjoy both of them. I don't know many people that don't. But I do know that there's a lot missing from the movies that were in the books. Um, especially that one line from Dumbledore about the Goblet of Fire. Uh... Man, I'm trying to think of any other things that I've seen adapted. Beastly, I have seen the adaptation for. The one that I talked about at the beginning, the Beauty and the Beast retelling. Um, and that actually wasn't too bad. I have seen it a couple times since I saw it in theaters. It's actually pretty good. Um, the only thing that was really weird for me is in the book, Beast is uh, Kyle. Or he renames himself Kyle. No, his name is Kyle. He... I don't remember. He renames himself at one point, so she doesn't recognize him because they went to school together. But anyway, um, in the books, he's actually, like, a beast. In the movies, he's got, like, weird tattoos all over the place, and he's bald, and he's got, like, scars with, like, metal in them, and I'm like, is that supposed to be scary? Because it's just kind of odd. Um, I wouldn't necessarily say ugly, just different. Um, you know, so, don't know what they were doing there. Man, I feel like I have to look at my bookshelves and be like, what have I seen? And that, and that is adapted. I have seen The Host. I have not read the book. The Host is right here, by the way. Um, I don't know how I feel about it, actually, because I have not read the book. The movie wasn't half bad. I have not seen it again since I watched it, and that was maybe... Either last year or the year before. Um, so I don't really know. I mean, it was good. It just wasn't my favorite thing ever. I have seen Divergent. I have not seen Insurgent or Allegiant. Um, 
And I haven't read the books either, so I can't say much on that. Um, the Darkest Minds, one of my favorite book series. but It's by Alexander Bracken, and I'm pretty sure I've talked about it before, especially in the last video where I talked about magic powers. Um, although it's more like supernaturally powers in that one. But, but, it is being adapted. I'm pretty sure into a movie. And I am so excited. So far, they have Ruby casted as um, Amanda, who played Rue in Hunger Games, and she's adorable, and I love her, and it makes me so happy. Um, then they have also casted Liam, and they have casted Suzume, and Suzume um, is, I want to say her name is Maya, or Mia. Hold on, it's on Instagram. Um, but she's like the cutest thing, and I am so excited to see her as um Suzume because she's just adorbs. And I think we'll do a very good job. And she's actually gotten to meet Alexander Bracken. Which is pretty exciting, not gonna lie. Okay, her name, as soon as I can get the picture open is Maya. Maya Sech, I think. M-I-Y-A-C-E-C-H. Or check. But she's so cute, guys. Hold on. Look how cute. She's adorable. I love her. I'm so excited. I don't know if she's been in anything before, but she's like, she's just, she's so cute! I'm excited. Um, but I don't, as far as I know, they haven't, um, cast anybody else, but I'm, I will be so angry if this gets messed up, but I don't think it will be. I, I a lot of the movie adaptations that have come out more recently, um, are really trying to stick to what the authors wrote, just because if you don't, you're gonna get a lot of angry fans, and your movie is not gonna do well. But I guess the whole point is to make movie in the theater. Make movie. Make money in the theater. So, like, people hear about it, they wanna go, they go see it, and even though they hated it, they paid to see it. So, I guess maybe that's where it all comes from, which is messed up and not how things should be done. Um. Trying to see if I have any other books that have adaptations. Because that's basically, it says adaptations, but I mean like book to movie adaptations. Um, <laughs> trying to look. I know, I think, is a selection getting a TV series? Some, some other book that I know of is supposed to be getting like a TV series at some point. You know what movie should, or what book series should have a TV series? Throne of Glass, because I think it would be awesome, but I don't want them to mess with the age. Uh, although, if Selena Sardothian was my age, I actually think I would enjoy it more. So you know the whole representation thing, which I actually do need to do a video on at some point, a representation. Um, not representation, a um, PSA, because I have done a PSA before, because the amount of hate that I have seen from people towards people of different races and um, the LGBTQ plus community and even just towards white people that support, you know, equality and diversity and representation is just, it's appalling. It's, what kind of person are you when you say that somebody doesn't deserve the same rights, the same treatment? It doesn't matter who they love, how they love, as long as it's not creepy, you know, like pedophiles, for example, um, cause that's not right. Uh, there's a difference there and I'll talk about it at some point. Um, but, you know, it, it shouldn't matter the color of a person's skin, their orientation, whether they're disabled or not, it shouldn't matter. I, and I, I don't see why people fight this so much because we're all people like nobody's less human than somebody else just because they have darker skin or just because 
they, for example, because I'm a girl, um, like girls, or, you know, boys who like boys, or somebody that likes both, like, that, it shouldn't change the world. I mean, it should change the world to make things better for them, but it shouldn't be fought so much. Like, that doesn't, it doesn't make any sense to me. Nobody's any more different than somebody else just because of the culture they come from. I mean, I know different cultures, you know, that I personally find different cultures fascinating. Not bad. You know? I just don't understand. Okay, the last book to movie adaptation that I'm actually it was hold on, let me back up a little bit. It's actually a web show turned into a book, and it's called The Haunting of Sunshine Girl, which is a um, book adaptation of a web series created by Paige McKenzie about a girl named Sunshine who moves into this house in, I believe, Oregon. And, um, she knows something isn't right, and then it kind of, you know, is revealed to be haunted, and there's a whole bunch of really weird things that happen, and I loved the web series. The book was okay, and I think the reason I didn't like the book as much as I liked the web series is because the stuff that I really enjoyed about the web series was changed in the book. Um, and then another movie-to-book adaptation, or another thing-to-book adaptation, um, that I wasn't necessarily big on, and that was, um, A Whole New World by Liz Braswell, and that is because a great deal of the book is almost directly quoted from the Disney movies, and I feel like that is not the route you want. I mean, it's okay if you have, like, a couple, because it's where the story came from, but, like, the beginning of the book was almost literally word-for-word word Aladdin. And it was just kind of like, hmm, no. Um, but that is about all I have to say about that. Um, so I will see you guys hopefully very soon. I am just past halfway through Night Circus, which is, I, it's, it's taken me a long time to get through books these days. And I think the problem is I've just spent so much time doing one thing that I get burned out on it and I want to go do something else because I have a bunch of hobbies. I read, I take pictures, I crochet, I cross stitch, I knit, which is also kind of like crochet. I play video games, so like my PlayStation's out there, or I play Skyrim on here on my laptop. Um, I paint. I used to draw a lot, but I haven't drawn in a while mainly because I know I'm awful now. Because I haven't been practicing. So I have to like stare at this horrible artwork. And I know it will get better when I practice more. But it's just like it's so bad now. I just. It hurts my soul. Um, I watch movies. I watch um, TV shows on Netflix. I have yet to make it through. The only thing that I have made it through entirely what they have on Netflix. Um is Bob's Burgers, which is sad, but they're short and they're funny, and I have seen them enough that I can do something and so I can multitask while I watch them, um, but I digress. The whole point is, I'm not in the slump, I'm just slowly reading, and it is a really good book, and normally I would be like, constantly, but it's just, sometimes I just want to do something else, and I'm also working on a project for my friend who got married today, and I can't wait to see pictures. Um, but anyway, sorry for rambling on a little bit longer, um, but I love you guys, it means so much when you watch my videos and comment on them, and I will see you guys hopefully very soon, I hope you guys have a wonderful weekend, remember to drink lots of water, and to eat, because eating is important, um, and I love you guys, I really do, thanks so much, happy reading.